My real name is Brad Pitts, born with it. Brad Pitts Hollywood Evolution. You know you're in good hands. From the then. Literally loaded up the car, didn't graduate. To the now. Well, you're, you're in the know. And everything in between. The debauchery and the chaos and everything else that goes with it. E.T.'s never before seen interviews. I see my mom kind of go, I go, it's a living. Behind the scenes of his biggest films. Plus, what you never knew about his romances. So I got engaged. That's one of the greatest moments of my life. And bromances. I steal hearts. <laughs> All our best moments with Brad. Slave to fashion, baby. I'm a slave to fashion. Let's have some fun before we go out. This is E.T. Vault Unlocked Brad Pitt. On fire. The man is Benjamin Button on screen and off. Happy 60th birthday to the one and only Brad Pitt. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. Oh yeah, he's a movie star with a capital M and a capital S. So let's move this party to the ET vault and unlock all the reasons we are mad about Brad. When do you think you pass the baton to these young guys? Oh, I'm already, I've already passed the baton. I've always said it's a younger person's sport. It's a natural evolution. There's a shelf life on this thing. Hopefully we have other things going for us. Yeah, Brad just gets better with age. We see you with those Fight Club vibes. Let's not forget he has nearly 90 acting credits that have brought over $10 billion worldwide. Not to mention two Oscars and an estimated net worth of $400 million. Oh, I'm just some guy. Brad's transformation from Thelma and Louise boy toy to Hollywood's golden boy had cemented his spot in cinematic history. Here's my real question. We're the same age. How come you still have all that damn hair? <laughs> I don't know, but I got other problems. We'll, we'll talk afterwards. We love how this debonair extraordinaire has always exuded a cool confidence that has also made him beloved amongst his Hollywood peers. And I'll tell you this, we're not running anymore. There's a familiarity that comes with the two of us, and I think that's certainly in the instant stop looking at me, of playing <laughs> these characters. Why are you so handsome? My dad was a weatherman. He asked, for, you know, for help. I show up. I ask for help. He shows up. So much. He's a pack horse and, and he's gorgeous and he, you know, loves women and uh, I just, I love being with him. Brad, of course, has a history of dating some of his leading ladies. Will you tell me more about California? Yeah, I guess so. Brad and his California co-star, Juliette Lewis, were an item from 1989 to 1993. Absolutely none of your business. The following year, he began a three-year romance with his seven co-star, Gwyneth Paltrow. Did you get it? Got it. Good. Brad co-starred in two films with ex-wife Angelina Jolie, first Mr. and Mrs. Smith, then By the Sea. You get married, and all of a sudden, you go off and do this dark movie. Play a couple that on the brink of disaster. Then, during the pandemic, Brad brought some much-needed joy to the country with his Emmy-nominated SNL appearance as Dr. Fauci. Good evening. I'm Dr. Anthony Fauci. Brad shot the segment inside his Hollywood Hills home. So how did the spoof come to be? Well, SNL reached out to Brad's team after this. Which actor would you want to play you? Oh, Brad Pitt, of course. <laughs> Another unexpected cameo? Brad popped up doing the weather on John Krasinski's Some Good News. Brad, how's it looking out there? Looks, uh, pretty good. Yeah. During the pandemic, Brad also picked up a new hobby. We know you love pottery. Making pottery, oh where did God. that come from? <laughs> it was, like, it was lockdown, you know? We were all like, <laughs> what do we do with ourselves? And I just picked up a couple of arts and crafts. But when it comes to Brad's acting craft, that all started in the 80s. You go, yeah, once you pop, you just can't stop. Shirtless Brad has been a thing ever since this Pringles ad. But did you know Brad's first ever movie role was also shirtless? As a background extra in 1987's appropriately titled Hunk, a dream come true for the guy who dropped out of college and moved to LA with just 275 bucks in his pocket. Literally loaded up the car, didn't graduate, I didn't finish. All I had to do was hand in a term paper. But in my head, I was done. I was going west, and within a week, I was doing extra work and really, really happy. The first TV thing was either Dallas. I hope you won't be doing any drinking. No, sir, I'd never do that. Or 30-something, where I had one line. Hi. Hi. Shirtless or in a basketball jersey or as the cute new guy at school in growing pains. I sound like 
James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. Brad was already on his way to heartthrob status, even starring opposite Johnny Depp in 21 Jump Street. You really been to jail? Yeah. But his road to superstardom wasn't always easy. I was extra in a Charlie Sheen film. Oh, business, business, you know how it is. It was a big dinner scene at a, at a restaurant, and they had me pour the champagne in the glasses, and I thought, I'm gonna try to get a line in. Then I got to this actress at the end, and I poured her drink, and then I looked at her and I said, would you like anything else? She looked at me and went, Ugh. Yeah, the first AD goes, cut, 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 cut. And he came over to me, so you do that again, you're off to set. And I was like, oh, man, oh, man. Brad's big role started coming in the 90s, and that's when E.T. first sat down with him. How old are you? Me, 38, 22, 14, I don't know. So how does Brad feel about seeing himself just 26 years old? We have that here for you, and I want you to hear <laughs> what you said. What did I say? My real name is Brad Pitt. Yeah, I have big goals. Everyone wants to be taken seriously uh, to an extent. I, I thought I knew what I was talking about. No, but I like that. Do you, you see, feel like Mickey Rourke films? I got the Mickey Rourke bandana going. Of course, Brad's breakout role was in Thelma and Louise. Take that cash you put in that bag right there. You got an amazing story to tell your friends. It's tough when Thelma and Louise and there's little Gina Davis rolling around scene. Right. I see my mom kind of goes. <laughs> it's a living. He arrived to the premiere with then-girlfriend Juliette Lewis. Throughout the 90s, Brad landed 17 film roles. I wanna meet a model. Yes, that really is Brad singing in Johnny Suede. And remember Brad in Cool World? It's the man with the badge. In the flesh. Fight Club, Legends of the Fall, Interview with the Vampire, and A River Runs Through It solidified Pitt's place as a hot leading man. Well, I'm sorry about that. That was my fault. Your name comes up on the screen, and the squeals just start. I mean, who's going to complain? Are you kidding me? I mean, listen, you go through all of high school to try to get that. When Brad started dating Gwyneth Paltrow, the two sure did like to match. Why aren't you married, William? Oh, Trace. By 1996, Brad popped the question. Yes, I got engaged. That's one of the greatest moments of my life. When I talked to her, she said, I want a lot of kids. I guess I'm going to be a dad with a lot of kids. They never ended up getting married, and Brad wouldn't become a dad until Angelina. But he did close out the decade dating the friend who would become his first wife. Speaking of friends... This guy named uh, George Jorg... Jorge. Jorge. Jorge Clooney. He's a very nice guy. Hi, Brad huge Hitt. fan. Huge, huge, yeah. huge fan. It was 2001 when Brad first worked with fellow A-lister George Clooney in Ocean's Eleven, kicking off a Hollywood bromance for the ages. Been practicing this speech a little bit. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed. That was good. I liked it. He was being the dutiful newlywed on the phone with the wife every night. It's not that complicated, really. Talking on the phone with my wife or, or hanging out with this guy. Jennifer Aniston or me? Former sexiest uh, man alive. Clone. These guys have a lot in common. They are actually both two time sexiest men alive, both two time Oscar winners, and of course, they both love to roast each other. We all really like each other. We get along, except for Brad. Who's the biggest diva in this group? Brad. George. There's plenty of reason to hate him, let me tell you. you turn ahead. that camera Take off and I'll tell you talk. some stories. E.T.'s had a front row seat to their decade-long prank-filled friendship. No, I just stayed home. I did a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> you. I put and, out a memo with a call. And don't sheet. look me in the eyes and help me with my character by calling me only Mr. Ocean. <laughs> Two days later, I walk around the passenger side of my car and there's this big sticker that says small <laughs> on board. Would you guys want to do a 13? No. Absolutely not. No. no chance. No, unless we could just do it All right, without each other. But just three years later... It's the latest. The Ocean's Trilogy raked in over a billion dollars at the box office. The dynamic duo starred together again one year later in Burn After Reading. And this year, the longtime pals were spotted on set of their upcoming thriller, Wolves. My goals in life now are pretty simple. Just not get into a financial situation where I have to do Ocean's 14. <laughs> The truth is, I just really enjoy being around him. And can you believe them all wanted me to throw this away? Who are the most handsome men in the world, past and present? Hmm. Well, I gotta name that George Clooney. Another handsome co-star Brad loves to give public props. The Oscar goes to Brad Pitt. Leo, I'll ride on your coattails any day, man. I would have shared the raft. 
never let go. Brad earned a Golden Globe and his first acting Oscar working alongside Leo in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hey, You're a good friend, Cliff. I tried. Brad and I, as soon as we step into these shoes, it was one of the more easy sort of natural fits that I think I've ever experienced. Here I come. Oh. He's a good egg, and I'm really happy the restraining order was lifted off of me, and so we were able to work again. And then there's Bradley Cooper. Brad credits him with changing his life. I got sober because of this guy, and every day has been happier ever since. I, I love you, and I thank you. Dad's got to go to work. You guys said you wanted to get rich. Now you're rich. Really takes a lot of pushing a lot of nurturing it for years and years to get it there. I'm really proud of the work. The Big Short, Moneyball, Okja, they're all Brad Pitt back movies. The star's Plan B production company has earned three billion at the box office globally. E.T. first talked to Brad about being a producer 20 years ago when he pulled double duty on Troy. It's, it's a whole nother aspect of our, of our business, you know, um, just developing the story. Immortality, take it, it's yours! Always been that comfortable with your own body? No, no, no. I have my own vanity and I have my own, you know, things I'd want to change. The then 39-year-old gained 20 pounds of muscle for the role, quit smoking, and yep, even tore his Achilles tendon. Achilles hurts Achilles. Yeah. yeah it's stupid, stupid twist of stupid irony. But looking like a Greek god paid off. The film made nearly $500 million at the box office. These summer films, because of their size, they all take a little more effort. Boss Brad also had a producer credit on World War Z, his biggest blockbuster to date. He backed Eat, Pray, Love with longtime pal Julia Roberts, Blonde starring Ana de Armas. Plan B and Brad um, have been very, very supportive. I don't think we would be here today without them. And we can't forget films like The Departed, Moonlight, and 12 Years a Slave, which all took home Oscars for Best Picture. We keep in mind great stories and stories that need to be told and stories that are relevant for our time right now. Hi, Aniston. Hi, Pitt. How you doing? Good, honey. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Come on now, even the stars were smiling watching that happen. Brad and Jen reunited in 2020 at the star-studded Fast Times at Ridgemont High Virtual Table Read. I'm still smiling about it, but in order to appreciate the journey, we've got to flash back mm -hmm. through the past, over two decades earlier, when Brad and Jen became more than friends. It's true. I tell you, I love my wife. I love yeah. my wife. Can I just say that I love Brad Pitt, I love you. The volume level when the two of you arrived just elevated beyond belief. Did it really? The two were introduced in 1994 through their managers, but it would take four years for things to turn romantic. Brad and Gwyneth Paltrow had ended their engagement, and Jen split with Tate Donovan. How long did it take you to know? I want to be committed to this guy. Oh, to that, that was, Brad Pitt that guy. That was a date. That's all that took. <laughs> we were pretty hooked after that. Yeah. July 29th, 2000, 200 guests, including Courtney Cox, Cameron Diaz, Salma Hayek, and David Spade, watched as the pair tied the knot in a lavish Malibu wedding, complete with a reported $20,000 firework display. <laughs> The newlyweds made their debut six weeks later at the Emmys. Brad sporting a necklace with Jen's name on it. I'm really excited to be here, thank you. She's nominated, which must be Yeah, that's right, yeah, I'm ecstatic. The pair was Hollywood's most successful couple. Brad had earned a reported 40 million the year before, and Jen was about to earn a million per episode for Friends. We can do it all, we're sleep we'll sleep when we're 80. All right, all right babe, hi. Rachel Green. God, I hate her, Ross, I hate her. It's all good. It was such a fun experience for us to work together like that. Soon the two were working together and of course this was inevitable and frustrating. When are you going to have a baby? <laughs> the world is waiting oh, for you guys to get pregnant. Well there's a room that yeah. will eventually be filled with hopefully a child. Brad and Jen baby. I can see it now. But in 2005 Brad and Jen called it quits. Relationships happen, and they happen for a reason, and they're not necessarily meant to go on forever, and you're supposed to learn certain things from work. each. And work, yeah. Cut to 2020. The A-list exes made our wildest Hollywood dreams come true with this epic reunion at the SAG Awards. What do you make of all the ridiculousness? We, it's hysterical, but what else are they going to talk about? <laughs> the same can't be said about Brad's relationship with Angelina Jolie now. 
It's bitter cold despite starting red hot in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Satisfied? Not for years. At first, their romance caused a tabloid frenzy, Team Joe Lee versus Team Aniston. But soon, they were minted Hollywood's it couple and always candid about their six kids. I don't know how you can be gorgeous every time you show up for these and have the kids around the house all morning. The well, dress goes on last minute. We've gone out peed on without people <laughs> yes, knowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just dad. Nothing's cool. Nothing's cool with dad anymore. But. But this is why we do it, you know, this is why we do these, just for the kids. Brad often takes things the kids make and turns it into something like he made a blanket one year of all their drawings. In 2012, Brad popped the question and their kids were already wedding planning. They've got a lot of crazy ideas <laughs> and I'm sure most of them will win out. So yes, they'll, they'll be the ones deciding the, you know, when it comes and how it's done, I'm sure. Two years later, they tied the knot at their winery in France, Chateau Miraval. Angie's veil included sketches by their kids. How's married life? It doesn't suck. The couple skipped a honeymoon to go shoot their second movie together by the sea. The drama was about a marriage on the rocks. Because I'm jealous. No! You're sick! No! We, we had a few uh, weeks into it. We wondered if it was a good idea because it's heavy and it's a lot of fighting. Soon it got ugly off screen too. Angie filed for divorce in 2016 after an altercation on a private jet where she claimed in an FBI report Brad poured beer on her and was shaking her. Brad was cleared of any wrongdoing. They also waged a nasty legal war against each other over their winery and custody of their children. Brad on the road! These days, Brad's been low-key about his personal life. For a little more than a year, Brad's been going strong with jewelry designer Inez de Ramon. A source tells ET things are going great between them and they both make an effort to keep their relationship private to protect it. Let's have some fun before, before we go out. Yeah, Brad popped up in that ad for a luxury coffee brand. Maybe that's his secret to looking ageless. Mm. Made me thirsty all of a sudden. <laughs> did I say that out loud? <laughs> you sure did. I sure did. But yeah, Brad is embracing his new chapter as a bona fide renaissance man. Good night, everybody. I got one question. Go. What is uh, the so reason for you that you took a, a kill tonight? Breeze. Okay. The breeze. Okay. Talking to Brad Pitt about fashion is a first. You've been giving us all the looks. That's it, man. The glam, but also the debauchery and the chaos and everything else that goes with it. Okay. Brad's continuing his fashion trends through his own clothing line, God's True Cashmere. The price tag to look like him, about 2,000 bucks. Slave to fashion, baby. With a glow to match, he also has a line of his own skincare products made with grapes grown at his winery, just like his ex Gwyneth Paltrow. Brad admits the Goop founder was probably the first one who got me to even wash my face twice a day. Well, I'm really good at it. 